you've probably heard of fracking. It's how drillers break up underground rock to get at oil and gas. Its formal name is hydraulic fracturing, and around 2007, it took off, making the U.S. the top oil and natural gas producer in the world. But fracking isn't actually new. It was invented in the 1940s, but kind of overlooked for decades. So why did fracking all of a sudden become this huge deal? The answer is a three-part story of geology, economics, and technology, and pastries. Let's start with number one, geology. Oil and gas is found in sedimentary rocks, which are made up of a bunch of ingredients, sand, mud, and prehistoric life. They're mixed together, deposited, and baked underground for millions of years. Some of these rocks are porous, meaning they have big holes that can hold fluid kinda like jelly donuts, with pockets of delicious and energy-rich oil and gas in the middle. Getting oil and gas out of these jelly donut rocks is simple. Drill a well, and the pressure from all the rocks above will push it to the surface. Other rocks end up more like layer cakes. And just like cakes, some of those rock layers are also porous. But instead of big pockets, they have lots of teeny tiny cavities that can hold fluid. Fluid like chocolate sauce or energy-dense oil and gas. Often, these layers aren't permeable, meaning all these teeny tiny pockets of oil and gas are locked up. They can't flow anywhere. To get the oil and gas out, we have to create cracks and channels by pumping water, sand, and chemicals down inside, fracturing the cake, or the rock. That's fracking. Now, fracking a layer cake is trickier and spendier than sucking the filling out of a jelly donut. Which brings us to the second part of our fracking story, economics. Turns out, the U.S. is filled with lots and lots of jelly donut rocks and layer cake rocks. But after 150 years of drilling, those cheaper, easier jelly donut deposits were running out. By the early 2000s, energy companies and policymakers in the U.S. were getting seriously freaked out. Where will all the oil and gas come from? From the unstable Middle East or from countries in crisis like Venezuela? The options weren't good. As the price of oil and gas went up and up, the U.S. also entered a recession, leaving people hungry for economic opportunities. Those expensive, tricky layer cake rocks began to look a bit more tempting. Whipping up investment in element number three in our fracking story, technology. We got better at drilling way deep into the earth. Plus, we figured out how to drill horizontally, creating many more cracks and freeing up more oil and gas. Combining horizontal drilling with fracking, now we could finally extract those tasty little pockets of oil and gas efficiently. By the end of the decade, we had all the necessary ingredients, the geology, the economic conditions, and the technology for a fracking boom. A boom that's made the U.S. the number one oil and gas producer in the world, but one that has also brought lots of controversy. What does fracking do to the air, to the water, to the climate? 